Hi, Travis with Splunk here. In this video, I want to go over taking a search or a report that you may have created and turn that into a dashboard. I'm going to touch on both simple classic XML dashboards and the new Dashboard Studio Builder. I learned a new trick and I wanted to show everyone. Now, if you're new to my channel or other videos, I've been showing how to build dashboards, but I'm going to go over real quick how to find more information just in case this is the first time you've seen my videos. An easy way is to go up to the navigation menu and click on the dashboard menu item. If you're in your own app and you don't have that, you could always go back to, I'll flip over here and go back to search and reporting app and then click on dashboards from there. This will take you to the dashboards page, list all the dashboards that you do have available. And if you know, you can play with the filters and whatnot. And if you're the admin, you can see everyone that's built the dashboard. But here at the top is latest resources. Now we have examples for Dashboard Studio, Intro to Dashboard Studio. That's the new way of building dashboards. I'm not sure when I get to stop saying that since it's been around for a little bit now. But then you have Intro to Classic Dashboards. That's what I've built a lot of my dashboards around, and I am learning you know, new tricks inside of Dashboard Studio every day. So here, if I click on learn more, you can see more information, it takes you to docs.splunk.com. This is a great resource to help you understand all the different features inside of Splunk and even building dashboards here. Another great resource for Dashboard Studio Builder is this visit example hub. Now, this is a inside of Splunk, a nice little tool to use to see, you know, how do I make a single value? There is, you know, you can do single value with emojis. I learned that the other week. Um, but, you know, inputs, drill downs, a lot of good information here uh, and complete dashboards. So you can go review how somebody else put a dashboard together and all the different mechanisms and cool little features in the back end reverse engineer it to understand how did they do that little piece. And this is how I discovered what I'm going to show you when I get to Dashboard Studio and converting my report over to that. First, let's go back to my report. Here you can see a report that I put together for my internet service provider. I have a speed test CLI running on a Linux server, once an hour pulling down information on how fast my internet is and with other information here as well. So they said, here's uh, four metrics that we would like to have when they're trying out new features or testing uh, changes that they'll make to the network. And then I wrap this up and export it as a CSV and send it to them in an email. But if I was, or if you have a search report that you wanna make it prettier, pop, have a, line chart that shows you the spikes or the dips in the last 24 hours, we can easily click the edit button here, open this in search. And once this page is open here, you can see the search that I put together to get this information and round the number and make it easy numbers to look at. And then, you know, rename them with the as down here and as up, then do it by time and sort it by time. If I click on visualization, it already, because this is a report that I was running and playing with, um, it's already got Trellis enabled. And that's why it laid each, you know, the down, each metric, the down, the up, the latency and jitter in its own little time chart. Now I'll go in here and uncheck it and show you what, you know, what you normally get before I go back in and show you the you know, different features of trailers. So I'm going to go back in here and you can, you know, change the size. You can make it large. You can share. So I'm going to put it back to medium here. You can share, you know, the numbers, you know, one, you know, zero through a hundred, or you make it independent for each one. So you can really see the, the ups and downs. And I really do like, how this is laid out. So I want to save this as a dashboard. So when I come up here and click save as, I have the option for new dashboard. 
but I don't have the option to use Dashboard Studio Builder. It's grayed out, and that's because it's not supported yet in um, Dashboard Studio Builder for line charts and area charts. Now, I do believe it is supported. The trellis feature is what I'm talking about being supported for a single value. But I can easily say here, you know, ISP Classic, click on Classic Dashboards and save the dashboard and view. And here, um, you know, I've got a dashboard with the four panels that I like. But what if I wanted to move this around? I wanted to add this to another dashboard. I really wanted this same view in Dashboard Studio Builder. All right, let's back up and we will go over how to get this simple XML dashboard and rebuild it in Dashboard Studio Builder. Now I could go back to reports, reopen this report, or, you know, since I'm right here, I'm just going to come down here and open up this in a new tab and start from here. And I'll close that one out. And here you can see, um, same search. Now it's in a new, as a new search and let me click on visualization. This is what I was talking about. Um, since I don't have this saved, cause I, you know, just open up as a search. This is what it would normally look like when you first click on that. And then you go into the trailer mode and you can start messing with the, the layout here. But I'm going to uncheck that. I'm going to go back to statistics here and I'm going to click save as, and we're going to say new dashboard. And now I have the option to use dashboard studio. So I'll say you know, ISP. And I'll call it studio. So I can you know, know the difference when I'm looking for it. And then here I'm going to do an absolute layout. I do like the absolute. Probably use that more often than the grid because I don't know if I'm going to do a grid. I'll just do it in simple XML. But anyway, we're going to click view dashboard here and open this up. And now we have, it should be the uh, table with our times down, up, latency and jitter. Not exactly what I want yet. I'm going to click edit here. Um, and I know hopefully it's not too hard to see the, the panel here in the middle, but I'm more, you know, focused on the navigation pan panel over here, the configuration menu. So what we could do from here, um, you know, I could start coming in here and you can see the table search that I have. I'll open it. It's the same one. I could, and I'm going to copy this. I could easily come in here and replace this and say fields. So it will pass information to my chain searches. I'm going to hit apply and close, which is going to break this search. And then from here I can start, well, it doesn't really break it. It just, it's not the way I want it to look and I want to start building. So I'm just going to go ahead and delete this. Um, but I want to start building out know visualizations here so I can do a line that's what I said I wanted and I'm gonna draw this out and now I want to create a chain search off of this table search and I may rename that here in a second here table bam and I'm going to get rid of what the table search has because that's going to be my base and then I'll click apply and close I don't need the sort time in there, but you see it worked. Now, I only want down, so I could have, and I should have maybe come in here and deleted everything. Now you'll want to, um, you can go, there's two ways I can go about this. I can delete just underscore time and then everything but the down, let's just say we just wanted to see the down. You know, I could do this, click apply and close, and now I'll get the download speed, or I could have changed this over to a time chart. So then I could have just said time chart here, then got rid of the by time, which will give me the same results in the end. Now it will come up here and you know start doing a little dots. That's because with time chart, it's a little bit different. I would have to go into 
see here data display yep right here zero or um connected i like the connected better because if i just do zero for you know every time it hasn't ran in that hour it's going to give me a zero there depending on how i do my span but i'll do connected to give me a smoother line across the you know it's one hour increments i'm doing this i mean i could put all here or i could do minimum and max you know, this is just things that you can do with the, the time chart. Uh, if I had multiple, I could split the series, you know, start playing with all these different features, go to the documentation, and start you know, learning what you can do. What if I told you there's another way of doing this without having to build, um, we go to the data sources here, without having to build chain searches and just have the one table search. What I'm going to do now is actually on a Windows machine, I'm going to control Z and remove everything I just did. There, 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 and start back from the beginning. All right. Um, yep, right there. So here I have the one table search, which I'm going to rename. Let's call this the ISP research. ISP, and I'll put an underscore there. I will, um, I'm going to delete this sort because I'm not going to need this with a time chart and input. I forgot to, you know, even though it could be time range picker in here, it doesn't automatically uh, map it to the time range picker. Make, you know, ask questions about that later. I'm going to hit apply and close. I'm going to rerun the search. Still my table format. I'm actually going to delete this now. And then from here, I'm going to go up here and click on uh, the line chart again. Now it will, you know, it's looking for the search to use, which the ISP is unused right now. I'm going to select it, which it will bring up the four lines for the four metrics. But if I scroll down to, and or if I close everything down to, um, position but data configurations you can see on the y axis here we have multiple selections that we can make i can easily unselect everything but down and i have a chart with just down i could you know control c copy this and control v and make a duplicate of it now the only thing i noticed is when you do the control C and control V, if you look at your data sources, it actually made a copy of the first search. But what I've been doing is just go up here and delete this one. Yes, delete. And then I go back to my data sources for the one that's blank now and say, hey, just keep using this one. And then I will have to change my Y axis, uncheck down and check up. So either, I mean, like I said, you can do the control C, control V, or just add your next one if you want like this, you know, make it bigger, smaller. What I'm going to do is actually put jitter and latency in both on this one here. So let's go here, click on ISP, and now uncheck both the up and down. Click off of it, and then I will click save and view. And now I have something very similar to the uh, simple XML dashboard that I built. Um, I can rearrange these however I want. If I wanted to add more information, you know, other information from my firewall data, you know, I can start moving these around, but I have my download, my upload. And if I go to activity here and open up jobs, you can look here and see that only one search is running. You know, I have a lot of other searches that are running and you know, there's probably one where I was my base search where I was trying that out, but you can see in the, the latest jobs that only this one search is running, not four or three at the moment. So here, um, let's click edit. You know, there's other options that we can do here. You know, if you don't, like, you know, if I want to rearrange, you know, if I want, you know, the down here and move this up here and 
do something like this. The bigger go into position and size and you know make these two the same. You know, I'm just clicking back and forth and seeing that that was let's say I'll make it 700. I'll make this one uh, 700 as well. You know, and that gives me a little bit of a uniform look. You know, I can move this one up here and attempt to, you know, consolidate. You know, I could put the wallpaper in here. Uh, if I don't like purple lines on both of these, you know, we could go down to, uh, I already got that selected. We could come down to our, the color and style. And let's see here, I've got the down selected. So I could drag, you know, if I wanted this to be more of this green color, I could drag that to the top and it's gonna change the color of that. And it's gonna build, you know, when I come over here, it built a custom profile just for this one line chart. So if I, you know, look at this one, it didn't change. Uh, I could, you know, easily come over here and move that color up and start, you know, customizing even the colors and which ones I want the lines to be. Um, other things that I can do in here, or what I'll, you know, I could change the line width. If I want a, uh, you know, darker line here or whatnot. Uh, markers outlined, and there's a lot of options that you can have. Another thing I like to do is go into Legend and maybe put the stuff, you know, put the legend at the top. So then the line chart is going through the whole visualization there. Now, if you decide to change you know, from a line chart to an area chart on one of these panels, let me show you what happened. Now, first I'll click on down here. I'm gonna go all the way up to the top here. We're gonna say visualization type underneath general and change that to an area. Now it gets, it adds all of the other metrics back into this chart. Then we're going to have to go back to data configuration underneath Y and deselect everything but down because that's what I wanted in this panel. It also changed the legend and the color. So we'll have to go back through and, you know, redo, click that. Custom was still there, um, but just redo that, you know, tell it, hey, I wanted to use this custom color. Oh yeah, and let's go to legend and put that back to the top. So it will reset the settings and, and you'll have to go back through and readjust them to your liking. So let's go ahead and save this dashboard, let you view it. Um, this is very similar to what I built built inside of the simple XML classic dashboard. You know, there's a few more steps, a little bit quicker over there, but now I can start adding you know, other data into this. If I wanted to, you know, firewall data or whatnot to go along with this or, you know, move it around, make it a cool little chart. You know, I could separate these searches out. You know, there's a lot of other things that you can do with dashboard studio and with the configuration panel, uh, take your time and, go through and click on things. That's how I learn. I click on the, if I click edit, you know, I'll go through here and start clicking on things to see, you know, how does it change this from that, that to this, you know, what is it doing to me over here? That's how I learn. I break it. I figure out why I broke it and how to fix it. So hopefully you found this video helpful. If you have any questions, comments, please put it in the comment section and happy spelunking.